All right, and we are live with Bob Schneider here at the Pace Studio in downtown Atlanta, Georgia. Bob, thanks for being here, man. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, we're stoked to hear three songs today. Um, you're in town for a show tonight at the uh, T- Terminal West, so thanks for making this a part of the, the day and your time here in Atlanta. We'll talk a little bit more about where you're heading and where you've been uh, as we go along, but I'd love to hear a little bit about the first song we're going to hear. Um, all right, maybe I'll just play it and then talk about it afterwards. All good. out my feet Flames cover all your kisses I'm a psychedelic freak Alone here on the moon Holding a spoon Full of wishes just for you The day will come We'll have to go Till then please just let me know That you want to go With the flow And by go With the flow I mean I feel like when I do, whenever I play that song live, that people are like, "Is he just making that song up on the spot?" Oh, I didn't feel that. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. I didn't feel that. And if you were, I'm fully, I'm fully convinced slash fooled. Um, like I said, you're here for the Terminal West gig tonight, so I hope that's a good one. Um, and if you're watching this right now from Atlanta, don't sleep on that show. It's a great venue. Have you, have you been there before? I was there a long time ago. I don't know when anything happened that's, anymore. That's completely fine. Like it could have, like everything happened like four years ago, but it could have been eight years ago or a year ago. Right. Well, and all those things are still happening simultaneously, right? So, um, do you believe that? I kind of do. I think that there's. Yeah. So if everything's happening right now, how can everything be where it is? Uh, alternate timelines. I'm. I am no expert here, but uh, I, I'll. I'll tell you though, okay. if you want to know. Please. Yes. It's because all this stuff that you think is solid is not solid. 
So if it's not solid, then it can all be here at the same time. Waves instead of, yeah, well, uh, right, fabric versus, uh, versus wood, right? No, I'm saying nothing versus everything. It's just like a TV. Like if you look at a TV, like if you were to show a TV to a caveman, He'd look at the TV and he'd go, oh, what's, why, how'd those people get in there? And you'd be like, no, there's no people in there. It's just an idea. Yeah, there's some light reflecting right. off your eyeballs. It's electricity so I, in your eyeballs, right. Yeah. What's that? It's electricity in your eyeballs and light, yes. Yeah, I mean, it's like a dream. When you have a dream and you're, you're laying in your bed, but you think you're being chased by a tiger or whatever. I don't know what you dream about, but what, what do you dream about? Something like, let's, let's see. Uh I haven't had the first time I read, uh, I think it was The Illustrated Man. It was uh, maybe I'm getting the book wrong, but there's a story about uh, I, I used to have this as a recurring dream after I read this story. Uh -huh. long, long, this is longer than it should be. But um, one of the first stories in that book, because it's a collection of short stories, is where these kids uh, turn their like virtual reality bedroom in against their parents, essentially. So instead of imagining this kid friendly, safe, like uh, lullaby mobile type safari, they actually create a more authentic, real safari and their parents enter the bedroom and then are killed because they have trapped their kids in this virtual reality simulation. So I would have the dream that I was in that story mm. for a long, 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 long time. Like over and over you would have that yeah, dream? Well, like, yeah, not and over like, and over And would your parents get killed or would you get killed? Who Who's getting killed in the dream? I was trying to save everybody from getting killed. Oh, you were. And I didn't create the scenario. So I think it was weird because I think these And was kids, it like animals and stuff? It was the same shit, except these kids created this reality that I was now stuck in and was supposed to accept being a fellow kid but I didn't want my parents to be killed by these tigers or whatever. So there were tigers so, in the dream. Totally. To answer your question, yes, I do dream about things like that. Um, recently, I, I have to think about that one. I haven't had any recurrings for a while. But You don't have recurring dreams I have, now? Not, not since that one, and I haven't had it for a while, but I guarantee you I'm going to have it tonight. That would be cool. <laughs> it would be cool. Maybe. I don't know. I, it'll be cool. I hate I think dreams I where stuff's not going well i bet i can make I, I bet based on this conversation and bringing that back into the into my subconscious uh maybe i'll prevail this time and i well, i think there's been like outcomes have differed based on this sometimes i save everybody sometimes i don't i don't know i think it's just the hero dream that that is a classic dream construct but for me it's it's about ray bradbury <laughs> so or a story he told anyway so how about you do i have reoccurring dreams yeah or what are you dreaming about right now uh, thank God. I, I was having pr going to prison dreams for years, which are my least favorite Sounds because I bad. would not do well in prison, even though I kind of dress like I'm ready for prison. I'm <laughs> definitely not. I'm like, so like I would just be immediately somebody's wife and it would not be cool. Yeah. So all the dreams are like, I'm just going to prison and I'm like, Oh man, well I, I don't even know why, but I'm going and I'm not happy about it. And then thank goodness I wake up. I actually kind of like those dreams cuz then I'm like, oh, I'm so glad that I'm not going to prison. Right, the relief factor is Yeah, be it's good. pretty nice. The relief is good. But still I prefer not to have them. Not to have the stress of oh shit, this is going to happen. Yeah. Ahead of that. Yeah. I feel that. Thanks for sharing that. I like I like my favorite dreams are the ones where I'm either making sweet sweet love or flying but not flying too high because i do you have the dreams where you start flying too high and they're oh, like, like oh atmospheric. no no i haven't had that but i no. i i could see that being coming like this is awesome this is awesome this is terrifying this is terrifying yeah 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 so yeah. i like the ones where i'm just i like the ones i just had it today actually where you know where you're just you can like run and then kind of hover and then move. You have those all the time. Yeah, I was having that this morning. Okay. I was like, oh, this is so. And every time I'm like, oh, why don't I always do this? And like people are looking at me going, ooh, that's how is he able to do that? So it's flight, but very low to like just. Yeah, you're hovering. just like, yeah. you're just like an inch or two off the ground. Have you ever had those two dream themes at the same time? If you've had airborne lovemaking. Oh, I thought you were going to say airborne going to prison. No, 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 no. No, I haven't. No. I don't think you can combine those two. I don't know. I'm going to try in my dream state. 
I don't think he can, if I could control my dreams. Oh no, watch dude! Out. We can talk about that because I I feel like I, I there was another era of my life where I could I, I like I learned that you shouldn't be able to do that, and then I like focused on trying to be able to do that, and I like, try to change the color of things and stuff like What's that. What's that called when you when you're aware that you're dreaming? Lucid, lucid yeah, yeah thank lucid. you. Yeah, I was gonna say waking, but that's not it. Lucid dream, yeah. Maybe lucid that's dreaming. It. I don't know, dude. Lucid been. dreaming immediately. I try to aim the ship towards the shore for, on those. <laughs> I'll I just leave it at that. Away, but, <laughs> I'll right, leave right. it at that. Very nice. Yeah. Um, what are we going to hear next, Bob? Um, this is a song based loosely on Avengers Endgame. So if you haven't seen it or if you're waiting to see it, there's definitely some spoilers. Spoiler alerts. Yeah. For instance, like uh, Iron Man dies at the end. Dude, you just crushed my... No, I'm just kidding. I've seen it. But it's not really Iron Man. It's just Robert Downey Jr. playing Iron Man. Right. Like, did when you're watching the event... You've seen all the Avengers, right? I've, I, I think I maybe missed, like, uh... I think Please I missed, don't say you missed Infinity War, because that's the best of the bunch. I did miss Infinity that's War. That's the only one worth watching, because okay. it's got Guardians of the Galaxy in it. I didn't see that one. It's so good. Okay. But uh, watch that one. I will. Have you seen Endgame? I have seen Endgame. Okay. Yes. So I've seen the, the tragic uh, demise yeah, of, of Tony fire, Stark. Of, of Tony Stark. But yeah. at any point while you were watching the movie, did you ever go, did you ever not go, oh, that's just Robert Downey Jr. doing his I, thing? Because he's I such a fine actor, but he's always Robert Downey Jr. He is always Robert right. Downey Jr. Yeah. I can't, I haven't, I still haven't forgiven him for um, whatever. Tropic that, Thunder? Yes, exactly. Did you have to forgive him for that? I don't know that I do, but I haven't. So I, I, I and not only see Robert Downey Jr., but I Wait, see Robert so, Downey Jr. from that movie when I see Iron Man. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's very confl- it's conflicting. You have some conflicting feelings. I have about a lot it. of feelings. Oh, I yeah. I don't. I haven't. I've got. I've got so many fish to fry before I. That was is one that I is going to get put on the grill for me. That makes sense. I mean, I'm I'm older than you though. How old are you? I'm 39. Yeah, I'm slightly older than that. I just, I just, I even though it's not time for that to go on the grill, maybe I still see it as a fish in the stack of f- fish to be grilled. So, I'm um, yeah. Even when he's Iron Man. What about Chaplin? What about his work as Chaplin? You know, I'm not familiar with that. You've never seen Chaplin? I haven't, dude. It's not that great. It's kind of real. It's real '90s now. If you were to watch Chaplin, now, you'd be real like, '90s." Now. I think when it came out, it was like, "Ah, oh, this guy's a fine actor." Is that was that like a, the breakout? Was that his like Goodwill Hunting uh, breakout or whatever? that was his? Now I've got all the money I need to buy the crack and the heroin, and then that's when he started waking up in people's houses. I think right, right okay. after that, and that's that was when I remember hearing about this actor for the first time. But got it. I don't know the timeline though. I don't. We could just say '90s. It's definitely '90s, for sure. Chaplin was nine. Is very '90s. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go get in the Wayback Machine after this. I'll at least watch the trailer. So yeah. All right. Maybe I'll just play the song. And so uh, here we go. Thor is the god of thunder, but he's also a family man. Settled down in Milwaukee and he's got himself a wife and daughter. He works for the Bank of America. He does it all for love. At night he likes to go to the karaoke bar. Sing his favorite songs by his very favorite bands. He's got a minor drinking problem, he is not addressed. He really does his best, but it's getting out of hand. And Thor likes the Green Bay Packers, they're his home team. He's an owner too. One day, while he was driving, he got 
got into a fender bender It took all his patience not to kill the other guy All he really had to do was let his hammer fly But that rage and destruction stuff had really lost its charm He put it all behind him forever Thor is the son of Odin, but that's not all he is. Oh no, and cause maybe people can change, not who they are, but maybe their way. And Thor is the god of thunder. But his wife is an underwear model So he does the cooking and she does the dishes After he goes off to bed uh, Thanks. Thank you. Nice. That song was making me cry. It's so sweet. For a second, I, you said something that like really spoke to me, and then I, for another second after that, I thought, wait a minute, this song isn't about me. Who's it about again? And I thought you were talking about my friend Thor Harris for a second, who's a great drummer, who you probably know since you're from Stick People. Yeah, from from all of from Swans and and uh, yeah. That guy, he's from an Swan. Guy. Oh, I don't know. I just know I I know one Thor from Austin. He used to be in a band in the eighties called Stick People. That can't be him, right? It's got to be the same guy. Really? Yeah, yeah. Does he look like Thor? He's got long blonde hair and he's totally. like beefy. He plays like weird sawed and half drums that he sticks back together right. every show. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Thor Harris is the man. Wow. Yeah, and for, so I knew, and then I remember like, no, he said this is loosely based on the Avengers, right? It's about that Thor. And then you said another line that made me know, oh yeah, it is in fact about the uh the 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 deity uh, thor not the the deitized thor not my friend who plays drums and is also not about me so i went through all three it's pages. actually it's just about me actually okay all these songs are just about me it's about either about us maybe or is that well, a stretch that's corny what's that well no I, i'm i mean i'm i'm like married and i've got a daughter and uh my wife's real hot so it's really it's just about me and and Kari what's your favorite karaoke song then oh i hate karaoke oh so that part's not about you that's that's when i thought you were talking about me well i mean all the all the stuff's made up but the at the core the root of it's all me always my dad loves karaoke got like, it that's his favorite thing he, got it. he goes to the karaoke bar once a week and i can't imagine anything worse <laughs> at, at all and he doesn't even drink my dad like he goes there sober as a judge and loves it and is into it. What's his jam then? Like, what's the go-to? I don't know what his like John Henley or something. Like, no, he knows every. He's so he's a he's a retired opera singer. He used to sing opera. Oh, okay. So he's got a well, good. He's a good singer, and he loves music. And he knows he could sit here and play a thousand songs from the forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties. He knows a ton of old like pop songs. Cool. Um, I'm kind of the opposite. I don't know any cover songs at all. I couldn't play you one. Um, but I've written a lot of songs. So it's kind of, he's never, he's, he, I guess he wrote one song when he was in college. It's not good. <laughs> you should bad. cover it and make it, make it better. No, it's no. Not, oh, but you don't do not that. coverable. Yeah. All right. Or yeah. I don't. That's fine. It, but that's cool though, that you're, if uh, I know a lot of people who, I've been over the years who have been more classically trained or whatever, like to kind of snub their nose at popular music. So that's, that's cool that your dad is not like that. In fact, it's the opposite. Well, he was actually working his way through college playing in a band. And back in the like sixties, I guess that was the thing you did a lot of covers and stuff, or maybe yeah. it still is. Right. I don't know. I mean, some of the killer, I mean, yeah, like Sabbath started doing covers and like all these bands started doing covers back then, but yeah. Yeah. We so he was doing that, and then he just kind of took like a 
I guess, a voice course or something at the university and then just fell in love with opera. So he ended up moving us, the whole family, over to Germany so he could, like, study voice. So I ended up growing up over there. That's cool. Yeah, it's pretty good. We're, we're, let's see. So if you're a little, were you there when the wall came down? You were a kid or had you no, moved was, there yet? I was a kid before the wall. Before so the when wall, I was right. there, there was a wall and you'd go to like Checkpoint Charlie and you'd like stand on the line. And then if you just put your toe over, they would shoot you and kill you. <laughs> it was pretty, of course we didn't do that. Right. So we I wouldn't do that die. either. What's that? I wouldn't do that either. But I do, I do remember like being a kid and seeing it come down, but you weren't there yet. So that makes sense that I was, you don't have anything to say about it. So, well, I mean, I, I, yeah, at least other than checkpoint, Charlie, it's, wait, that's post wall or no, that was pre wall. That was pre. I mean, that was post the wall being built. Checkpoint. Pre Charlie was point. there. Got it. Up until they, it's probably still there. I imagine. Right. I maybe as I'm a, sure they've still got checkpoint. Charlie or historic. Yeah, landmark of some kind. No guns involved at this point, I hope. Maybe you can, sh maybe they have made it into a joke. Who knows? I doubt it. That's a pretty serious uh, freaking thing. So, um, you were in Nashville yesterday and you're heading to Austin um, back home by the 18th, right? The Saxon. Did I already say that online? I can't remember, but that's where you're heading. So. After this uh, date tonight, you know more Southeast, you're, you're driving, right? Uh, yeah, we're playing tonight. Then I've got a private party tomorrow in atlanta i think it's somebody's wedding perhaps is it a wedding yeah it's a wedding it's a wedding yeah and then yeah and then monday i'm at the saxon pub which i've been doing that for 20 years now very cool it's playing the same tiny can i say shithole totally i think i've already said shit at least once so yeah you can say the same the tiny shithole for 20 years but it's really it's it is truly my favorite gig because we so I write songs every week and so I get to hear them uh, with the band. We don't practice, so I just send them the songs and they learn them and and I get to hear them for the first time That's with the cool. band, kind of with the audience. So it's kind of like going to see myself play. <laughs> You're all in it together, right? I mean, that's that's pretty cool. That's a lot of trust. You have a good band. I mean, it goes south occasionally. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's it's not doesn't go well. But uh, a lot of the times it's it's like real magic because like really what you're trying to get at when you're performing is to do something you've never done before. Like even if you've played a song a bunch of times, you're still trying to get at doing, you're just trying to get to doing it in a way that seems new or that you've never done before. And then when you when that happens, it's, it is really magical. I felt that. Yeah, I totally understand that that feeling sometimes it happens and it's an accident and that's even cooler yeah like when you don't mean it to gel the way that you did or you don't mean that like that thing like oh man i want to do this this one little flourish or lick or accidental that i've been meaning to do and then you don't do it the way you meant to do it but it's still cool i think that's cool. well i think you get to a point when it's really happening on stage you're not thinking at all you're just kind of in the moment and you're just doing a bunch of stuff and then you kind of are lost in the moment. You're not, there's no thinking like there's no, like I'm going to do this. I'm gonna You're do just, this. you just do it. It's pretty cool. It is cool. Yeah. Maybe that's my fault for being a drummer is thinking too much, but, um, are you, a dr so you're a drummer. I am. That's primarily, not yeah. surprising. To okay. Me. Like it, I, actually a lot of things are starting to make sense. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. All right. I'll take that as a compliment. Or sure. at least an understanding, and <laughs> an entry sure. to understanding. <laughs> Bob, I like I like talking to you, man. This is good, but we should probably play another song. Sure. What's next? Uh, this is called "The Lord of the Flies." <laughs> I'm in the space force now. I'm on my way back home. I got my cell phone on, so I'm never alone I heard he hung himself from the bathroom wall I'm in the Space Force and I'm having a ball I'm in the Space Force 
space force I got a brand new hat Used to hold me down just like that But the flames rose up and took you away I'm in the space force so it's okay that thanks um what else can we talk about that we haven't already um let's see i think we've we've pretty much uh covered all the stuff that's uh that's on the list that i that i had um i did want to shout out though i did i did see that cool uh artwork thing that you got involved in and i and i and i said i wasn't going to talk about this and i just want to mention it briefly because i think it's cool it's a multi-musician show and it's called sound waves of texas um so you've got a piece in that i noticed that like there's a john prine song that's been turned into visual art a miranda lambert song that's been turned into visual art i know that wasn't like a deep personal thing with 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 you or what it looked so cool so i just wanted to throw that out uh if anybody didn't know that that existed um but uh, you're up to a lot of stuff in Austin. 
Like you have a, you do a lot of cool things. You've got some holiday shows coming up too. I do. I do a holiday show every year at the Moody Theater where they film Austin City Limits. Um, it's it's pretty fun. I, I have some great guests and uh, just some really great uh, musicians that play in that band. It's, uh, it's called the Moonlight Orchestra and it's just some fabulous jazz guys that play in it and uh, the Tosca String Quartet. And uh, it's pretty cool. Nice. And uh, I've also got a, a podcast, a couple pod, you know, like who doesn't have podcasts now? I guess that's a thing. And uh, so I've got one called I'm Okay, You're Okay. I'm not okay. You're not okay. And then another one called the Song Club, um, and uh, where I talk about uh, whatever the latest songs I wrote are, and uh, and uh, doing that weekly uh, show at the Saxon Pub, which is also uh, we we uh, put that out uh, every Monday, um, stream it on Facetime. So. Or no Facebook, 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 right? Yeah, so. I saw the I saw the live stream links. Yeah, and the podcast does the, both of those podcasts sound really cool. I'm definitely gonna um, dive a little more into. Uh, tell me, uh, I'm I'm okay. You're okay. I'm you're not okay. okay. I'm not you're okay. not, you're not okay. okay. Right? Yeah. 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 I saw a couple of cool guests on there, and uh, well, yeah. there's no guests. It's just me and this buddy of mine, Clint Wells, who's a guitar player. Um, we just talk. We just kind of talk like you and me are talking right now. Dreams. Uh, actors wh- and whatever Got it. comes across the radar. I'm seeing the subjects that you are talking about, not guests, but that's uh, that's cool. I will check that out. So, right on, um, Bob. Thanks for being here, man. Hey, thanks for having. I hope me. you have a, the best show possible at Terminal West. And uh, that sounded weird. It's like there's like there's a chance that it, there's there's a possibility it won't be good. That's not what I meant. You never. You, I, I well, you, you really it. don't know. I mean, it really is. I I, I do feel. I like, I like taking chances when I play live. So it it really is sort of like being on a high wire. Uh, like what what's that? Is it tightrope? Like when you're walking tight on a tightrope? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and I I try not to use a net. And so occasionally there you know, uh, it, there's some calamity that that happens every once in a while. We we lose some folks at at occasionally at some of these gigs just because I'm terrified of of being boring at any so I I sometimes will cross the line a little bit. So you never know it could go really wrong tonight. I don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen. Well, but that's the way I like I mean I really I love that. Like I when when I go see a ba- if I see a band and I know like they like if I know what's going to happen from beginning to end then I'm I'm out. But like, if I go see somebody like Celine Dion, like I'm really like the whole time I'm like, she may injure herself. Like when she starts pounding her, because she's tiny, right? Brittle bones. I'm like, she's gonna crack a rib. I don't know what's gonna happen with this woman because she's in. She's she's got a lot of passion. Yeah, she's got that accent, like a thick sort of. Is it Canadian? It's a Canadian accent. Yeah, it's it's like, but it's it's. And when yeah, you're forcing like super, that much, super rich, right? And you're forcing that much air out of your thin body with that accent, the way the consonants work, Canadian. I don't know what's going to happen. Like seriously, so I mean, I'm C- Celine Dion. Who else? I don't know. I don't know anybody else that's still alive that has that kind of mystery to the performance yeah because james just, brown's dead i just saw elton and i would say that he's got elton's got the same thing he's got do you some, feel like he's going to injure himself i don't feel like well uh i don't like feel like he's going to injure himself i feel somebody's like, going to injure themselves watching elton yes yes actually that that is true but also just uh Who? like uh i don't know it did for me that like it didn't even seem real because that person was just putting out like so much uh like that passion and like Elton's not pounding his chest uh, a la Celine, but it was, I don't know. It was, uh, I, there was an, un, there was an, his piano, there was like some unpredictable stuff. I feel like he's banging a triplet when it's on the record. It's a couple of quarter notes or whatever. Um, it was cool. That's some, that's some sweet drum talk right there. dude. Oh yeah. Well, come on. <laughs> uh, are you a big Elton John fan? Is he your fave? 
He's not my fave. I uh, I was I felt very like fortunate to have a chance to see a living legend. You know what I mean? I would do. I would go to see Celine Dion too, though. There is that weird thing when you see somebody like Elton John, or Tom Petty, or Paul Simon, or I just saw Paul McCartney not too long ago. When you see like this music that you've listened to your whole life, and it just does, it just seems like oh, that's always been there. And then you like realize, oh, that's a human being. Like when you see yeah. the human being, you're like, oh, that's a human being wrote Beyond the Yellow Brick Road or whatever, Benny and the Jet, whatever, you know, right. whatever songs you like. And it's pretty crazy. Like, like for me, at least, it was, yeah, I, there's I totally a weird disconnect with that music where it's like, oh, no human could write this. Because it has so much permanence. Like it's already ubiquitous by the time I heard it. Right. Like, it's like was... the Bible or something. Bingo. But then after I saw Paul McCartney, I started realizing, wait a minute, maybe the Bible was written by a human being and not by God. It's like this very music possible. <laughs> that I thought was written by God. This Beatles music was written by a human. Maybe the I mean, I I don't want to scare off any of your hard religious right crew, but I mean, it could be. I mean, I, it's a thin chance that it's it was written chance. by humans. Even even if there's anything getting lost in translation between the the message and the vessel or whatever, but maybe we shouldn't go there. But I will say, Elton John got way out. I want to see if Celine. I want to see Celine Dion, Dion getting way out for myself as well. I think you getting way out tonight to keep it interesting is a great thing, and I and I have complete faith that it's not going to go south. Well, I'll let's hope. <laughs> We can only hope. It could be we time. can only hope and pray, really. That's true. And 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 maybe we'll be praying to a human being. Who could know? Dude, that's some strong talk. Strong talk. Real talk. We could do this for a lot longer, but do you want to get off the internet? Or do you want to stay on the internet? I, it doesn't matter to me. It's up to you. You're the guy calling the shots. I mean, this is the last... I mean, you know, this is the last one of these that we're going to do today. Um, I do have to get off. We have to be done in 19 minutes. So oh, we do. That's the maximum level of time that we have. Okay. Um, but uh, or we could be done now. It's really it, it. I'm calling the shots, but I'm leaving it completely in your hands. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. All right. Do you want to just keep hanging out and not on the internet? We can do that. I don't know about that either. Okay. <laughs> I want to know what you meant by I'm starting to figure you out. Now that you're a drummer, things are becoming clear. No, I'm, I'm I'm I am joking a little bit. I figured. Yeah. I, figured. I feel like you set me up to I, say that. I might have. And then you got me back with the triplet talk. Uh, mm. Yeah, let's maybe we should call it. We'll call it. Let's end it while it's good. It's good right now. Yeah. Bob, it's been a really cool hang and I hope we get to do this again. I've enjoyed it too. Thank you. Right on. All right. Safe travel.